This story comes from a doctor who once lived on a Bristol council estate with his young family. During the 1970s, when the eldest of my three children started school, we moved into a 1930s council house on Wexford Road in Knoll West, Bristol. The first few months were quiet, and the neighbours were really friendly, and the family were very settled and happy. They moved into the house in March, but by June, strange things started to happen. It was my daughter's first birthday, and we decided to hold a little celebration, inviting friends and family. The weather was nice, so we held the birthday party in the garden. One of the children needed to use the toilet, so my wife took them upstairs. As she waited for them, she saw someone in our oldest son's bedroom. She called out to them, thinking it may be a relative that she hadn't noticed, but she had no reply. She went into the room, only to see an old man with his back to her looking out of the window and into the garden. The child, who she escorted to the toilet, called out saying that they'd finished, so she left the room to see to the child. She brought the child downstairs and back into the garden and then proceeded to tell me that there was an old man upstairs. I rushed up the stairs and there was no one there. I looked in every room and nothing. I went back downstairs and checked the front door, which I'd locked, after everyone arrived for the party. It was still locked, so no one could have came in, and he couldn't have left through the back door, as he would have been seen. We kept it to ourselves, as we didn't want to scare the children. The party finished, and everyone left. But as we were clearing everything away, my wife said that she could see the old man again from the garden, looking out of our son's window. I looked up, and could see him too. Before this, I thought she may have imagined it. I ran into the house, and went straight into the room. The man was still there. I asked him what he was doing in my son's bedroom, and he ignored me. I walked closer to him. I was shouting at him. But as I got closer, he disappeared. I was in shock, questioning myself. Was I seeing things? And then I realised, no, my wife had seen him too. What was going on? I went back downstairs to speak to my wife and tell her what I'd just seen. At the time I watched him disappear, she saw him disappear too, from the garden. A few hours later, we had to put the children to bed. We were very weary about putting our son in his bedroom but we didn't have any choice without ruining the children's bedtime routine. It was about 10pm and my wife and I were watching the television in the living room when we heard footsteps coming from upstairs. We thought that it may have been one of the children getting out of bed for some reason. So my wife went upstairs to see if they were okay. They were all asleep, so she came back downstairs. We both went into the kitchen, and I made us both a cup of tea. We sat at the kitchen table and started talking about the old man that we'd both witnessed that day. At this point, we accepted that he must have been a ghost. A few weeks went by without any strange occurrences, until one morning. My eldest son was six years old at the time. He went into the bathroom to get ready for school and I waited for him as I needed to use it myself before work. I was standing outside of his bedroom when I heard a noise coming from his room. I locked in to find the old man was back again, looking out of the window as before. This time I rushed towards him and he turned to face me. He was smiling, which shocked me. I asked him who he was and what he was doing in my house. He just turned his head away from me and carried on looking out of the window. I just stood there looking at him for a few minutes before he disappeared. Without noticing, my son had walked back into his bedroom. He asked me if I knew Bert. 
I asked him who Bert was, and he said, The old man that you were just talking to, he's a nice man. I was gobsmacked. I went downstairs to tell my wife. We just couldn't believe what was happening. That same day, while I was at work, my wife visited the next-door neighbour, as they'd lived there for twenty years. She asked if they knew the people who lived in the house before we moved in. They told her that the previous tenants left because they believed the house was haunted. She then went on to tell the neighbours about what we had been experiencing. They said an old couple called Alsie and Albert lived there until the 1960s, when they both died within a few months of each other. As time went on, we just accepted that we had a ghost. We just never mentioned it to the children. Even though our eldest spoke about him once, he never did again. When my daughter was around 11, she had a few friends over to stay for the night. We were all in bed sleeping when we were suddenly woke up by one of her friends who was screaming and crying. I rushed out of bed to see what was going on. And she said that a man just walked through the door and stood over her and then disappeared. I ensured her that she must have been having a nightmare or it was just her imagination. My wife then settled them all back to sleep with a drink of hot chocolate. The next day, my daughter's friends had all gone home when I received a phone call from the father of the girl who had seen the ghost. He was shouting down the phone, saying that I was sick for scaring the children in the night. I explained what had been going on in the house, even though I felt like I'd gone mad. He wouldn't listen, and said that he was going to come round to give me a piece of his mind. About an hour later he turned up, shouting at me on my doorstep. I invited him in to try and explain about the ghost. I understood his anger. If I was in his situation, I would be the same. He just kept saying that I was weird and needed help. He finally calmed down and was about to leave, when he asked if he could use the toilet. He went upstairs and was gone for around five minutes. He suddenly ran down the stairs, shouting and swearing, and then ran out of the front door. I followed him outside, thinking that he was going to get violent. But he explained to me that his grandparents once lived in the house, Alcy and Albert. He went on to say that as he came out of the bathroom, he saw his grandfather, Albert, standing in the doorway of one of the bedrooms. He said that he was never a religious person, but he was going straight to church. We didn't stay in the house much longer, as my job took us up north. I wonder if the occupants who have lived there since have experienced anything. <laughs>